Hey, what's up guys? I'm Harry Torn and welcome back to Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign. So before we get started in today's episode, I did have one announcement I needed to make. So we will not have an episode on Sunday or on Monday. Now, of course, we don't typically have Monday episodes, so that's normal. And the reason we're not going to have a video on Sunday is because this weekend we're going to be celebrating my daughter's 13th birthday. So yes, we are going to have a teenager here in the house. Uh, her birthday was actually on Friday. Uh, however, my wife was not able to get the day off, unfortunately. And so we're, we're going to be celebrating it over the course of the weekend. Uh, you know, she was pretty cool about it. Uh, you know, that we weren't able to do it on her birthday. We could have, but of course she would have to wait till her mom got home to, to open presents and all that kind of stuff. And she gets home pretty late uh, in the, the evening. Uh, so she didn't want to basically have her, her whole birthday, her mom not be there. So therefore we're doing it this weekend and that's why we won't be putting out any videos on Sunday. So we will return with the series on Tuesday. So in today's episode, we're going to be starting a new conflict. I actually already have a plan for who we're going to be attacking. Uh, first, let me get these guys moving over here. And we're going to go ahead and replenish the health of our King's Army. Uh, and then we'll also replenish Baron John's once he gets up into that uh, city there. So you may have noticed throughout the series that there are two ways to replenish the health of your troops. And I have made use of both of those. The first way to do it is through here. And that is for that specific unit. And as I commented in an earlier episode, this is nice if you have a limited amount of population, which of course is not the case here in London. But if you got a limited amount of population, you want to make sure that specific units are the ones that get replenished. Uh, the other way to do it is through this button here. Uh, you'll see the same button here under the general. What's nice about this one is you don't have to actually go into the city to do it. You can just do it from the night view. Uh, but this one here does seem to be better in certain ways. In fact, most of the time it might actually be better to use because one thing I've noticed is that it seems like this method will use decimals. So if you look at this, this says it's only going to take one population. Now over here, this unit's also going to take one population just to restore one unit. This will take one population to restore one unit. And this one, which is only lacking 11 guys, we only have to replace 11 people. And that also takes one population. And I think that's because these have to be, you know, whole numbers. And so therefore it has to at least take one, regardless of how many men you're replacing. And sometimes it'll take two, like in the case of this Light Cavalry, if he had enough losses, then we'd have to, to replenish it with two population. So I think what's going on here is that this is just using decimals. And so therefore it's able to spread out that one population to fill all, all of these. So in most cases, this is probably the better option Again, unless you have very limited population and you just want to put it into one specific unit or, or a couple specific units. So in addition to replenishing his losses and filling up his army supplies, another thing I'd like to do once we have the money to do so is to go ahead and get our first little bit of equipment. I had showed you guys in an earlier video that we could do this with the additional troops. That'll give you 15% more men in each one of our squads, but it does result in a doubling the amount of food income, or I should say one plus for each of the units, which each of these units, except for the light cavalry units, does only have an upkeep of one. So it's going to add one for each one of these. So that's five more food here, but it is pretty much the only way to get more units once you've maxed out the number of squads. Uh, there are some uh, traits as well that I think result in, in more manpower per squad. So this is going to cost a thousand gold, uh, seven population. Luckily we have it here in London, and it's also gonna take 500 of our levies. I don't think that's gonna to be too much of an issue, because uh, you see, we, we do have plenty. But I don't know that we'll do that with Baron John, because we do wanna have some levies to replenish losses. So we'll have to see where we're at. Uh, but with Baron John, I'm not as worried about it, it's because you'll notice he does have a star on all of his troops here. And if you look under rank, it says seasoned. So they have gotten enough experience that they have now leveled up and they will fight better. So essentially Baron John, due to his experienced troops, he'll kind of be our quality army while the king is leading the quantity army. However, before we do any of that and let the game actually play, we're going to go ahead and declare war now. And the reason why is because I'm worried about missing out on an opportunity here that I just noticed. So if we look at Ireland, Leinster is currently at war with two of their Irish neighbors. In addition, they're also at war with the Scots. And so they're probably struggling in this conflict right now because they're uh, vastly outnumbered. Just fighting Scotland alone 
would be a difficult fight. But then they're also fighting these two neighbors, which they do, uh, you know, they are larger than both of them. You know, they have two provinces, while each of them only have one. But yeah, with all three of these combined, I imagine they're struggling in this conflict and they'd probably welcome our assistance. You'll also notice that their current king does not have a son and heir yet. Now he's still just an adult, so he's not an old man, so he's got plenty of time. However, he does have two daughters, including one who's old enough for marriage and would be a fantastic fit. Now I assume he would refuse this marriage and we have some influence here. We could always ask him beforehand. Uh, but why not just go ahead and join the war now? So supporting the war here. And he actually is not willing to bring us in. That's interesting. This might be an outnumbered. I was expecting that he would uh, want to let us get involved. Well, we can try and ask for the, the marriage. A glorious royal and it looks like, maybe because of our influence, he was willing to accept that. Somehow you got everyone around me convinced that a royal marriage with England is what we need right now. So shall it be? Let us celebrate. So we finally have found a bride for our king. And that is now Queen uh, Isabel of Ireland. Or more specifically, Leinster. Though we're going to call him Ireland because, I mean, they got the green uh, symbol here and they got the, the, the harp Irish harp there, so yeah, we're gonna call them Ireland. And they're gonna be Ireland eventually if we assist them because uh, they'll be able to get all this conquered. Of course, that's not really what we want to have happen. But for now, uh, and we are of course gonna piss off all of their enemies and uh, please anybody who happens to like them. All right, excellent. So we now have the royal marriage. Uh, our king has a bride and can thus hopefully give us an heir. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask him again to support in the war. Now that we're, yeah, see, now that we have the royal marriage, they're willing to, to allow us to help them. And what you'll notice here, I was going to go through all these. So yeah, we lost opinion with those that we declared war on. Of course, uh, they're very pleased with us, as are their allies. Yeah, they're going to like us quite a bit now. Yeah, they're friendly. We got them up to 890, so pretty high at the moment. And of course, all these guys are going to be really irritated at us. And uh, because Scotland had that uh, merchant here, we automatically imprisoned him. And that's the reason why I didn't want to send that merchant uh, to Scotland, despite the fact that we would have got more money. is because it's a very good chance that you're going to imprison them. So let's go ahead and hop back in the, the tactical map. Now you'll notice that there are different consequences of executing and releasing a regular knight. I had mentioned this before. Uh, basically the way your, your nobles feel about it will be different. It's actually quite the opposite. So if we execute this baron, it will actually irritate the nobility. And if we release them, it will improve the opinion of our nobility if we are at peace. Uh, if you're at war, then it's you know obviously considered probably not good strategy to give the enemy back there. Uh, back their knights and it will improve relations with Scotland or the opposite of course if you end up executing them and then of course you can always do the deal option that we talked about before but basically the effects of executing and releasing are different than if you uh, are dealing with a a rebel commander all right so you can see this battle here and this is actually a siege a siege of Dublin and they are set to lose it so it is as we feared they are not doing well in this conflict not only that I'm not seeing any troops anywhere. So yeah, they're in a dire situation. Okay. But one benefit of going this way is we don't look like the aggressor as much. Even though, I mean, we can conquer territory as we will. We don't come across as the uh, the aggressor because we're helping out a country that is being picked on. Uh, so let's go to make use of this option here to replenish an army and to get us some... Uh, supplies and upkeep and I think Baron John is probably going to be heading up here to Scotland to start doing sieges though we could also go after his army to try and stop this siege here maybe that's the better option and then send the king up north and he is the uh, the more experienced commander as well so I think that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and sail across here so the way that the fleet works which we haven't shown yet so whenever you click on this well we're already in a port here. But if we had been somewhere else, then you'd have to go to a certain location. You can't just, uh, you know, go into the, the sea anywhere. So let's say you're up here. 
you can't just go into the sea here or here. Uh, it would be probably right there. Maybe over here somewhere, but I think that's a, a location that you can embark and disembark. But yeah, basically you can't embark and disembark across the entire coastline, uh, only in uh, certain places. And of course, in cities, you can do that as well if it's a coastal city. As you wish. And then you just sail across, and there are uh, sea battles, but they're not on the tactical map. Uh, they're, you know, like like the old Total War games before they had uh, any sea battles. In fact, I've been meaning to discuss this. I was going to wait until we got into another battle before I did, though. About how... So yeah, you can see that he's not going to go in any location. So you see the the kind of cliffs here symbolizes that we can't uh, we can't go up that way. So we'd have to go here and over that way. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and just go up this way, though, because this is a fine location for us to engage the enemy. Uh, Scotland is sending more troops. Okay, so that's not good. Because we are vastly outnumbered here if he sends these troops. But I think we'll be okay if we just start the battle immediately. Because it does take some time to um, uh, disembark and embark if you're not in a city. So you notice when we did it over here, it was immediate. We just hopped on the ships and were ready to go. Uh, because we're not going through a port, there is a little period of time that we have to wait here. And so let's go ahead and get involved in this now, though I don't think this is going to go well for us, honestly. Though we do have the walls. Uh, we do have the, the you know walls to defend from. And because this is not our war, uh, this is not our battle, we didn't start it, uh, I don't think we'll have the option of, of doing anything here. Like saying, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what we'll to see. And this guy's sailing away. Well, that's interesting. I thought for sure he was coming over here to fight. Now, these are mostly peasants. Militia. He's got a few decent units here. Okay, well, that's interesting. Uh, we have the money, by the way to get the king what I'm wanting to get him here which is the additional troops so that's that thousand gold the 500 levies and then the seven population so let's want to get him that now and that actually put us in the negative on the food income all right so that's not good now it shouldn't be too much of an issue right now because we do have very good stability uh, but lack of food can be a, a pretty serious problem uh, so what we might want to do I think we're currently trading away food aren't we I believe one of our guys is currently uh, exporting food. And that's getting us 40 gold. It's nice to have, but you know, if we're going to have a shortage of food, then we might want to go ahead and cancel that. And you know, that'll get us our commerce back as well. So let's just go and stop exporting that for now. Of course, the Germans are angry with us because of that. But uh, we needed the food back so that we're not sitting in the negative. And because I'm going to need to build more troops as well. Uh, this is not all we're going to be doing here. Uh, so we need three more units, which we did not get the barracks here. Okay, I was thinking that we had built that. We had not. So he's got to take off to probably York. We're going north anyway. Hopefully they got enough population. They do. All right, so we're going to get those units soon. I imagine he's coming back to attack our stuff. Yeah, maybe Newcastle here. Yeah, more than likely. Or maybe he's going back to his own territory. And we got another trade opportunity uh, for Germany. We're going to go ahead and say, let me think, so that if we get a better food situation, uh, then we'll go ahead and, and do that again and get that money back. All right, so we are definitely going to win this uh, and ensure that Dublin is not conquered. And he is plundering us. Okay, so where is he at right now? He's over here currently attempting to plunder this. I say attempt, but he will be successful in that. Uh, we have also upgraded our docks, and that was over here. So we got that uh, upgrade, which is going to give us more food. In fact, that might have really helped us here. All right, excellent. So our uh, king is moving up north to York, and once he gets there, and the battle was won there. All right, excellent. So which traits does our king have? I have forgotten. He's got the leadership, he's got the archery, and he's got the cavalry tactics. Okay. So we definitely want to get some extra horses then. Yeah, that would make sense since we have that trait. And uh, probably another thing of archers as well. And then we'll get the light infantry. So basically the same composition that our other army currently has. All right, excellent. Um, so 
I don't think we'll be able to get anything else here. We could put the supply wagons on. I don't think it's necessary, though. We need to get those damn siege workshops. Maybe that's the next thing we should get, guys. Because, yeah, we have not... We still have not built those, and those would be really helpful. Uh, but yeah, let's go and start moving up north. I don't think we'll get there in time. They're probably going to ransack that, unfortunately. And we wouldn't want to engage them anyway. Probably they do outnumber us. Aren't they really cruddy, though? Oh, yeah, they're all peasants and militia, so we're fine. What is your command? Yeah, no issue there, guys. We march? All right, and so he's going to move down we're here. Marching. Maybe just straight up attack him. Perhaps that would be the best way to, to go about doing this. My troops are waiting. We'll arrive soon. Let's go ahead and click on them. And once we get in a battle, again, I was going to talk about something. How this, this game reminds me of an old Total War game. And some people have been frustrated with me comparing it to Total War. But I think it's... It's an apt comparison when when you when you think about it, that Total War's been around for a while. There's not just the new ones. Uh, and we'll talk about that, I guess, here in this battle. Because we're definitely going to want to fight this out. It is a balanced fight. You know, we have the superior troops, but they have more numbers. And it's a king versus a king. This is the, the king of Scotland here. Uh, the modifiers that are uh, currently being granted due to the train. Let's kind of hover over those. But yeah, this is going to be a very close fight. They got more morale than we do. Yeah, this is going to be a good fight, guys. Uh, so this will probably be the first real good fight that we've had so far. So this is going to lead our troops directly in the battle. And yeah, what I want to talk about was that I feel like this game, you know, I played almost all the Total War games except for the, I didn't play the China one, uh, which is, uh, I think, the most recent one besides the uh, Warhammer 3 which I haven't played that one either, I suppose. So as I was saying, some people have been a little irritated that everybody's comparing this game to Total War uh, because they make the argument that, you know, this game is, you know, nowhere near as good as Total War, particularly the tactical battles, you know, Total War series is you know, light years ahead of this game as far as mechanics and just all the things that are considered um, and the graphics, for instance. And so some people were getting a little bit irritated. I've had a few in my comments. Uh, that everybody's comparing it to a Total War game. And while they are correct that if you compare it to one of the newer Total War games, you know, this is you know, not anywhere near as good. And so it's difficult to compare because, you know, the Total War games are so much better. But if you compare them to one of the older Total War games, and I'm thinking like Rome Total War, the first one. Uh, because Shogun Total War, which was the first one that came out, I played that when it came out, uh, really enjoyed it. And then the, the next one, which was Medieval Total War, uh, those two weren't really 3D. Uh, they were like pixelated little 2D sprite looking things. And so that doesn't really compare to these ones. But Rome Total War, which was the next game in the series, I would say that that one very much does compare to this game. Uh, so for example, uh, all the units, uh, they every uh, guy inside, every individual inside of the units looks exactly the same. In today's Total War games, uh, they all kind of look a little bit different you know the one have a beard another has a mustache no, their outfits will be a little bit different so they look more like uh, individuals and uh, that adds a lot to the immersion uh, of the the battles uh, but Rome Total War was not like that you know every unit might look different the archers look different than spearmen or, or uh, different from the the light infantry or whatever uh, but the actual individuals do not uh, the graphics remind me of Rome Total War uh, maybe they're a little bit better in this one Perhaps I haven't played that game in a long time. So it might be slightly better in this one, but the graphics remind me of it. The battles, uh, the AI, uh, the aggressiveness of the AI is a little bit different because Rome Total War was, they weren't very aggressive at all. They mostly just sat there and let you shoot arrows at them. Uh, but with with the, the aggressiveness uh, excluded, the AI reminds me a lot of uh, the old Total War games where the AI was just absolute garbage, wasn't very good. Uh, this AI can do okay though because of their aggressiveness. Uh, they do perform a little bit better just because of that. But yeah, it reminds me uh, in so many ways of the old Total War games. With a, a much better campaign map and uh, campaign gameplay than we ever saw in the Total War games. And so I think that is an app comparison. I know some people haven't really liked everybody comparing the, the two games, but I feel like they're very comparable. If you look at the old Total War games. All right, so we're going to be sending our troops up for just a little bit, get away from this camp a bit. And then our knight, uh, he's going to be going over here. I guess it's our king. He's going to be going over here. 
and we're going to attempt to get up behind these units if we can and try and take their camp maybe save some lives if possible at the very least we might pull uh, their troops back a bit we're going to bring this guy over here and then maybe bring these guys up here and we'll try and charge at least the flanks if not all the way behind them I wouldn't be surprised if their cab unit which is just the knight that's all they currently have right now yeah they just have these peasants they have the two light infantry peasants on the flanks particularly this flank very weakened flank the one archer unit and then they have the knight so yeah not much over here guys and I'm gonna try and pause a little bit uh, less often I know I'm paused right now of course but uh, I'm gonna try and pause a little bit less often I know that some people don't like when I do that in fact that's why I stopped playing Total War games I didn't play him much on the channel anyways. But, uh... I tried doing a couple series. A couple Total War series. And people were very irritated with the, the pausing. And that's how I play. I play really slow. I talk a lot. And I, uh... I pause. And we're gonna make them run so they get over there a little bit quicker. Alright, so we're chucking arrows at these guys. And I guess we'll drive these guys off. We might just have to charge those uh, peasants. Yeah, we'll just charge the peasants. Alright, so we'll continue throwing these arrows over here. And he should be going over here. Yeah, we got him going over there. Alright, excellent. Alright, so these guys, they're uh, going to go ahead and charge back here. And then they're going to charge the archers. That's what I was waiting for, for those archers to uh, be open here. So we're going to hurry up and attack them and get them wiped out before they completely deplete our units over here, which are not having a good time right now. And you do kind of got to pause when you're having to go way off the battlefield over here. So we are having some difficulty in these battles. You'll see, I mean, our infantry are vastly outnumbered, and so that's our problem right now. Alright, so these guys are still chasing down the archers. Looks like those peasants are going after our uh, general here. And yeah, we'll pause every time we gotta go over here just because. Do we not have it yet? Hmm. That's strange. Yeah, that should have gone over to our side here. Okay. Yeah, I got my general over here spending time with this. All right, so we're gonna send these guys over here to help out. Uh, we really need to get into this battle. And then let's go ahead and have them charge as well. We might just be able to get the, the king killed. Yeah, they're going to lose this. We didn't even need to do all this. We weren't very quick with it anyways. Alright, so this has gone pretty well. Though, uh, not entirely sure where those guys are going. Let's see if we can't uh, catch him. Is he fleeing? Oh, he's going after... Okay, he's going after our camp. That makes sense. Alright, so let's go ahead and take any... Uh, troops we have that are available and we'll go after them and then we're gonna bring this guy to also attack the king and then we'll go ahead and grab this point as well but yeah I only did two Total War series and just wasn't a very good uh, reception overall because I don't really play Total War a whole lot. I prefer uh, Grand Strategy. I think we'll win by killing the king. Yeah, we slayed the king. Alright, so that's going to be a, a major issue for them if they didn't have an heir. I didn't check. We should have checked when we knew we were going into battle with the king. Because I'm curious what's going to happen here. Let's go and pause that and take a look. We got the highest population here. Uh, won that battle as well. And let's just see what happened to Scotland. All right, so they, they have a new king, a young marshal here. So we'll probably see him leading his troops as well. Okay, so it seems like he's not as good. If that was his father, then they're not as good. Now, if the king did not have an heir, then they're probably having a whole bunch of stability issues right now. Alright, so that was a, a big win for us. 
killing the king there. All right, so we're going to be doing this battle. Uh, we won't have to actually fight that one out. And then we should probably go restore our losses because we did take some few few casualties here. Yeah, our king won himself a battle. So that's a big victory for him. All right, so once he gets into the town, we'll go ahead and restore, replenish these losses. We need to speed this up as well. Replenish the losses. We'll replenish the army supplies as well. And they want a trade agreement with us. We're going to go and accept that. If they want to send their merchant over here, you know, we eventually might end up attacking them and then we can capture that merchant. Push forward. So we slightly outnumber them here. They do actually have some decent troops. They have some light cavalry, they have light infantry, and they have a bunch of bowmen as well. So yeah, decent number of troops here and uh, decent quality. I think we're better in, in both regards, of course, numbers and the quality. Uh, morale here, we're a little bit higher, but not much. But the problem here is that they're going to be uh, reinforcing with this army. Now, these are... Looks like he has that one building that makes the peasants better. Uh, but yeah, these are about four units and uh, 1,500 troops, meaning that we'll be vastly outnumbered if we allow him to get here. And so this is something I had kind of briefly mentioned uh, earlier in the series, is that they can still reinforce. Now, if we let the game play, then obviously he'll come reinforce the normal way, and then he'll be in the, uh, the battle right from the beginning. However, if we do this now and, and start the battle right this moment, then he'll not be involved in it. Instead, he'll be reinforcing. And sometimes, depending on how long it takes him to get there, which he's pretty close, so it's probably not going to take him that long to get there, so it might not be the case in this battle. Uh, but sometimes this can actually be advantageous because while you're waiting for them to reinforce, you can destroy these guys and maybe even take over the camps and then also destroy these 1,500 who can't get to either your camp uh, or uh, their camp in time because they spawn off on the edge of the map. And so I've had several occasions uh, where I'll defeat this army, the first army I'm fighting in battle, and then just go over to their camps and take them real quick, and then you also defeat this army without even having to fight them at all. So sometimes this can be advantageous. Again, it just kind of depends on how quickly they come. Uh, in this case, they're going to be here pretty soon. But I think we're going to fight it anyways, even though we're going to be vastly outnumbered. You know, whatever. If we lose, we lose. I'm willing to take a, a defeat here. The enemy is weak. Let us strike. This is also Baron John rather than our king, so I'm more willing to risk his life. All right, so let's, let's go and take a look at these troops, how they got them arranged. Again, it's mostly archers, so the last thing you want to do is allow them to sit back and just shoot at you. And we also might not want to charge over to these camps because uh, we're going to need all of our, all of our cavalry to, to take out the archers as quickly as possible. And in fact, what we're going to probably want to do is just get these guys engaged real quick with our infantry. Then hit the archers with our own archers. And then uh, try and destroy these these archers with the cavalry. Now they, they have their own horse guys as well. It looks like more than I thought. I thought they just had the one, but I'm seeing two over here. Plus the knight. Okay. And then he's going to be joining the battle in 42 seconds. So we're probably not going to get them destroyed. Uh, before he gets here. Uh, so that's another reason why there's no no reason to just go after the uh, the camps. Because uh, I don't think we'll get there in time. Alright, so let's go ahead and move these guys. We want to get this started as quickly as we can. So let's bring them up here. Get the archers going. And then the cab as well, up on the flanks. And we're going to definitely need to make use of our our knight here. Alright, so we'll see what they do. I assume they'll come after us, because again, the AI is very aggressive in this game. They don't typically seem to just sit and wait for you. Very rarely that they'll sit and just wait for you. Yeah, see, they're already marching forward here. So yeah, with them having the cab on the flanks, yeah, we're going to have some issues, guys. Because you can't just charge into the into the archers. All right, so let's see how we want to do this. So what I'm thinking is there's no point. Let's just go and attack these guys here. Try and get those wiped out. There's no point in really trying to chase 
uh, the uh, any of the archers down with the the foot troops. I don't think that'll work out well. And then the light spearmen, we're going to want them to engage the cavalry, so we need to get the cavalry locked down with our own cavalry. And then we'll just have to wait and see where the general goes. All right, so that's what we're going to do, guys. So let's go ahead and charge over here, and then we should also send the archers as well. And they can have an archer battle. And our archers are vastly outnumbered, so they'd probably lose said archer battle. And then these guys, we're going to have them go over here. Alright, so yeah, we're just going to be fighting these. And a big old battle. Alright, so they're engaging. And now that we have them locked down, I said I was going to try and not pause as much, but <laughs> it's been entirely ineffective. Promise, guys. Alright, and then we're going to go ahead and have our knight charge through now that we know where the units are. Alright, so they're going after our cav. Or, excuse me, after our archers. And so that's a problem. So let's just fling arrows at these guys here. So this is something that maybe you guys can help me with. Uh, I can't figure out how to change the archers back to, you know, range fighting once they go to melee fighting. So you can see they got the sword here. He's got arrows left. But yeah, I don't know what the key is. Uh, at Total War, you can, you know, flip them back and forth. You can, you know, have your, your ranged troops fight melee if you want them to, to order, them, order them to go do that, or, or have them uh, shoot, uh, you know, their ranged missiles. But I'm not entirely sure, once it goes to this, how to change them back. I assume there's a way. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing that I've seen down here, and I've looked in the controls, and I can't find one either. And so yeah, whenever they end up going to melee, I can't seem to send them back uh, into the range, though sometimes they do it on their own. So I'm not entirely sure how to do that. So maybe you guys happen to know. Uh, but you'll notice that the uh, enemy reinforcements have arrived here. Uh, so they do have all these troops, and that's where we're going to have some trouble, because I think we'd be able to win this here, but can we win against all those other troops? Here we go. So this will allow us to go... Huh. Yeah, now we can do it. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. All right, we're going to go attack those ones, and then let's get these guys attacking over here while they come in here and go after the leader. All right, so still trying to get all these archers tore up here. And just hoping we can get this one. And our, our cab is not doing well here. Hoping we can get this one before the enemy army comes over here. In which case we're going to be fairly outnumbered. We can also go after those victory points. Our victory points are pretty far away from the reinforcements. But yeah, I see they're stuck on the, the melee fight in there, unfortunately. Alright, so trying to get these archers destroyed here. And hopefully we're fighting that leader. And you know what? You're just never going to catch them like that. Alright, so again, we would have won this here. But now the problem... Uh, we did destroy that leader, so he's dead. So yeah, we basically have won this, but of course now we've got the second army to deal with, and we're weakened. Uh, we've already lost two of our light infantry, so we have no infantry, essentially, with the exception of these one light spearmen. And so in a pretty bad position overall. So what I think we're going to do is attempt... Where are they going? They might be going towards our, uh, our own victory points. And so what I think we're going to do is retreat over to those victory points. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do, guys. So the first one is, where is that at? All the way over here. So they're fairly close to that. So they might be able to get there first. So we're going to retreat on over to this victory point and attempt to get a win by either killing their leader or through the victory points. But honestly, this is probably not going to go well. <laughs> That's what I'm expecting. Unless we can uh, kill their leader. And I do want to make sure that all these guys are running. I don't know if I set them to run. Oh, we're still trying to chase these guys down. I didn't even realize that we hadn't finished them off yet. Alright, so we're going to have to do that. 
And they do have cavalry troops on their way over here. We can go ahead and have them engage these troops here. And so hopefully our troops get over there in time. They're going to be exhausted once they do arrive, though, so that's something to consider. All right, so still trying to get them engaged. Because we don't want them firing arrows at us. And this guy can go ahead and attack those archers. So get them wiped out. And they're not running. Yeah, it looks like this is where the, the battle's going to take place. Because, yeah, they're heading over this way. All right, so yeah, the battle will take place here. Run, guys, run. We don't have time to be walking. <laughs> All right, so look at those guys finished up, and then we'll try and go after that victory point. We have one cavalry unit over here, and then this guy is going to stay here with them. Oh, I need to get out of there. So let me just find him and have him attack these guys. We'll try and ride them towards. It doesn't look like we're going to make it. Towards our leader here. Come on. And then we'll go ahead and attack those. And then let's go ahead and dip on back over here. And these guys did not run. Yeah, and that's another thing I noticed. That they seem to like... Just change their orders on their own sometimes. All right, so we're going to have them go after the archers. And they will go after the archers as well. Kind of gang up on them, try and get them taken out. And then we'll engage. Well, you know what? We should wait. All right, so we're currently fighting over here. Uh, we do have higher numbers than they do. With our, our general, who's, who's better as well. He's heavy cavalry. But where is their other cavalry units? All right, let's have these guys go ahead and attack them. And all these archers, unfortunately, are fighting them. And so I thought they would avoid them. Well, that's another thing they kind of don't do. not do. You have them set to, you know, they're, they're supposed to avoid them. And a lot of times they don't. All right, so let's go and attack them there. And then go after these here peasants who are trying to get up behind us to take our victory points. So that's obviously not good. In fact, let's go and take the, the archers that have the least amount and go after them there since these guys are currently engaged here and can't really break off. Alright, so it looks like we finished this up but now we're being hit by the archers again. Unfortunately, so they must have came back or we never caught them. So let's go after a victory point since they're currently seizing our victory point. In fact, our general is likely going to get killed here. And so what we're going to do is have him go back home to our own victory points. So back here. Alright, let's go ahead and have them go after... Still trying to chase these guys down. As you see, these archers are not going after them. Again, they just don't seem to... You know, we sent some after them. They don't always seem to, to comply with your orders. They just kind of give up on the orders. And so, yeah, this one peasant coming up behind us. We'll bring these guys back. Since we would have been vastly outnumbered if we had stuck around here. I think we can win this one here. But yeah, we're about to lose simply because we don't have any capture points. So we're going to need to bring these guys over here. So they can't seize control of that. Let's actually go ahead and take that victory point back. And let's see what our... Alright, so again, they just kind of stop. I don't know if it's because they're getting exhausted or what the deal is. But yeah, they do seem to stop. You have them running and then they, they don't continue running. Alright, so we'll fight those guys real quick. We should have been shooting arrows at them, but it's fine. Let's go ahead and have them charge to get it dealt with. And surprisingly, this battle's going okay. Like, it's kind of a mess. Uh, but yeah, it's actually not going bad considering uh, how outnumbered we were. 
Alright, so we're seizing control of this again. And uh, I guess we can go and throw arrows at them, shoot some arrows at them. We don't really throw arrows, but y'all know what I mean. Try and get these peasants defeated before their cavalry gets here. Try and get these guys defeated as well, so that they'll have to fight cavalry. The cavalry will have to fight us with their. Uh, we'll have to fight our, our uh, spearmen. And then you can see their archers are on the way as well. And so we need to get this here battle done so that we can charge at them before they do any damage to our troops. Yeah, we're definitely struggling here. Let's actually go ahead and have the archers. See, again, they're, they're set to attack. I don't really want them to attack here. Are they out of arrows? Yeah, they might be out of arrows. Okay, so in that case, might as well attack them. With the archers? Oh, we're done here. Okay. Um, so let's have them charge at the archers. And them retake that objective for us. Now, I'm not entirely sure where they're... Uh, their cav troops are. There he is right there. So I think that's all they have left. And, you know, this should be a win here, just barely. We re really need to get somebody to assist them. So yeah, he was going to go after our victory point, but instead he decided to come over here. So let's shoot arrows at them. Or just let them get attacked. Oops. Just shoot. Shoot, man. And then let's go and attack those guys. And we'll bring these over here, but I highly doubt they're going to get over there. So I think we're going to win. It's a sloppy, super sloppy win. But I think we're going to get it. Despite how sloppy it was. And we're almost out of arrows with this guy as well. And so it's just a question of can our, uh, our general survive long enough? I might want to pull him out, actually. While we wait for the these guys to get over here because they're just taking their sweet time. We don't want to have our own commander killed and then lose the battle because of that. In fact, I might go ahead and have him retreat while they engage. Just until we get our knights over here. Because yeah, the last thing we want is for our general to get killed. Let's get the knights, uh, excuse me, get our spearmen in there. Pull the knight back. And then we'll charge back in once the spearmen have engaged him. Alright, so unfortunately those archers ran away, not surprising. Alright, so we'll charge back in now. And it's just uh, getting this one unit killed. He is completely surrounded. Uh, we do have the spearmen which do well against the horsemen. Uh, and our archers are garbage though, of course. Not going to do well in this. Of course, we could go ahead and go after the victory points with him. If we really feel like we're going to lose this. We could try and get those uh, victory points real quick. Yeah, because you see these archers are about to flee. Yeah, they don't like this at all. suppose we could have the archers go after the victory points, but they'll just take too long to get over there. Especially because they don't sprint for that long. Uh, you'll notice they... Uh, you know, in, in Total War, they'll keep on sprinting, even when they're exhausted. Uh, of course, when they get to the battle, they're going to be garbage. But they'll keep on sprinting. But in this game, it seems like they only sprint for so long. Like, it's a charge. That's it. They're going to charge, and they start walking. So you got to keep giving that order. Uh, keep sprinting after them. But I think we're going to win this, guys. I think having the, uh, the spearmen over here really made the difference. It's going to be super sloppy. We'll have no troops left uh, when we're done. <laughs> but we destroyed two armies. Uh, so there is that. It's a pretty big victory, simply because of that reason. But yeah, we're going to have to go back home to restore our numbers because he's not going to have anything left when we're done here. Yeah, majority of his troops fled from the battle. And yeah, now the archers are gone too. So it's just the spearmen and our knight. But there's only two dudes left here, guys, so it's just a matter of time. And there we go. All right, so we slayed the leader and got ourselves a, uh, a nice victory. And I call that sloppy victory where we only saved 510 men of our, uh, what do we have, like 2,700? So the majority of our men died. 
But yeah, I say that it was a nice victory simply because we were facing uh, 4,000 something, right? Yeah, I think it was, it was 2,400 with the 1,500. Okay, so maybe not quite 4,000. But they outnumbered us is the point. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna go here because I got a lot of uh, a lot of troops. We won't be able to replace the numbers here, but we can at least replace those. And then we can get into port easy enough. And then you got the barracks over here, so, uh, yeah, so we'll go down here and use those six units there. And I did forget we have our king up here as well. All right, so he's fully replenished here. Let's go ahead and go into Scotland. So we'll be using our king while our marshal here goes ahead and replaces his losses. All right, so is this a castle here? It is. So we could take out the castle if we wanted to spend the time to take it out. Uh, not going in here, and I want to show this, I'm not taking out the castle. So when we hover over our army morale, you'll see we're getting the normal negative five from being on enemy soil, but we're also getting a negative six from the castles in the province. So that tells us they have three castles because it's negative two per castle. So they have three castles here. So that's very unfortunate because we do not want to have to take all those over. And that is going to result in this being a, a more difficult location to take as well. That's probably a more challenging location for us to take. Uh, probably going to need more troops. I, I don't know. We actually have 3840. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not too shabby. So we can take a look, uh, but we would have to, to get all the, the rest of Scotland's units destroyed. We can't have them coming up behind us and, and supporting this. But it does appear that they're currently on the run. They're trying to get away from us. Yeah, they're not doing so good. They've taken some losses here. Their morale's really low as well. So yeah, their armies are, are not doing great. And uh, also, we've captured another commander here. We captured this guy in that last battle. So we didn't kill him. We just got him captured. I want to probably keep them in the dungeon uh, because that takes one of their night slots. And uh, do you really want to give them back a, a marshal so that they can raise another army? Uh, so yeah, I don't think we want to do that. So we'll just keep them in our dungeon until, probably until the end of the conflict here. Now we do have some books to spend. So we could just take a look and see if there's anything we want to get here for Marshal John, you know, in his secondary skills. I prefer something that would actually be beneficial, though he would get a decent amount of gold here. Because uh, apparently there's a lot of goods being produced in the location that he is currently the governor of. Winchester, okay. So yeah, he's going to get... A bunch of gold from that so that probably would be beneficial this one's nice because you get the faster squad experience so that'd be beneficial as well but of course we have all our other guys that we can promote too i think being at war we should probably promote him and so i'm thinking probably the bargain man yeah five gold that's not bad so we're gonna go and get that and then we'll have uh two more options here and we might just go with the strategy. Now, the 10% chance to convert religion to occupied towns after siege, that's pretty good if you're fighting uh, on borders where uh, it's a different religion. So, like, if you're in Spain or something like that, you know, you're fighting the Muslims or you're Muslim and you're fighting the Christians, uh, then this can be a good uh, a good one to get. 25% chance to convert religion of occupied towns after the siege. It'll save you a lot of money. Uh, so that one would be uh, beneficial, uh, but not for us. So we want to get that. So probably either writing or the strategy. I think we're gonna do the strategy. Yeah, we'll get that one. So we are done with Baron John. I know that we still have to get the secondary skills up to level three, but I don't see us prioritizing that. Uh, with it costing 500 bucks, we'll probably spend the points on, on somebody else instead. So we're done with Baron John for now. All right, so unfortunately that does have to be the end of today's episode. Those battles do take a while. But yeah, I, I enjoy the battles. Again, they they remind me of like an old Total War game, like Rome Total War. Uh, so obviously not comparable. Rome Total War is an incredibly old game. That's from back in, in 2004. So basically the same year that the first Knights of Honor game came out. Uh, so, you know, a game coming out in 2022 and, and being, you know, in my opinion, quite similar to a 2004 Total War game. You know, this is not exactly a flattering thing to say. Uh, but I, I don't think that it's incorrect either, you know, to, to compare those those two games. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely not Total War, but uh, the, the strategic uh, map gameplay, the campaign map gameplay, uh, this is doing some interesting things for me. I really enjoy it. Uh, again, the Total War battles, you know, Total War style, you know, uh, tactical battles, they're fine. 
Uh, they're not not as good as Total War. You're better off going to play that game if, if that's what you're into. But I've never been like a, a huge fan of the tactical battles. Like I like playing them. I enjoy playing them. But for me, and this is why I play grand strategy games mostly, I've always preferred the more uh, strategic layer uh, of things, uh, the campaign map. That's why I mostly play those those uh, grand strategy games that typically come from Paradox. Uh, so I really like what they're doing here on the campaign map. Now, I don't know how you would compare that with Total War and what they're currently doing. I haven't played uh, the newer ones, and from my understanding, the China one improved the campaign ga- uh, gameplay significantly. Uh, so I, I can't really compare that one since I haven't got to play it yet. It's on my wish list. I'd like to, to check it out because I have heard good things about it. Now, we do need to wrap this one up here. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. do hope to see you guys on the next video, which, remember, will not be until Tuesday. So I'll see you on Tuesday's episode, and thanks for watching.